Have you taken your digoxin today? No. This is your heart when you remember to take your digoxin. This is your heart when you forget. Hi, my name is Sarah Parsons. I'm not a doctor, and I've never even played one on TV. But if you suffer from heart failure, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, or paroxysmal atrial tachycardia, then I know of a drug that just might work for you. Digoxin increases the force of myocardial contraction, prolongs the refractory periods of the AV nodes, and decreases conduction in the AV and SA nodes. It also increases cardiac output and slows the heart rate. You're probably asking yourself what this means. It makes your heart work smarter, not harder. But there are some important things to know before taking digoxin. The first thing you have to be sure to monitor your apical heart rate for at least one minute before giving yourself a dose of digoxin. And if you find that your pulse is less than 60, don't give it. This could cause your heart rate to drop even less to dangerous levels. You also need to monitor the blood pressure throughout the treatment process. Notify healthcare physician of any irregular hypo or hypertensive reactions. And six hours after your dose has been administered, it is very important to monitor the ECG for any signs of additional bradycardia and any new arrhythmias. Also, monitor all intake and output ratios, as well as daily weights. Digoxin is often taken with diuretics. Assess for peripheral edema and also acetate the lungs for rails and crackles. Ask your doctor if digoxin is right for you. Don't do it for me. Do it for your heart. is it may enhance the accessory pathway conduction and cause rapid ventricular fibrillation. Okay, this young woman right here has hypercalcemia, which is too much calcium in your body. And the interaction that can occur is calcium and digoxin have an additive inotropic effect, and it may cause toxicity. Next, we'll go on to this beautiful young lady. Doesn't she look like Vanna White? And she has kidney disease, unfortunately. <laughs> and her reaction that occurs with digoxin is it can build up in the body and cause toxicity. Okay, so what are the other diseases that can, or additional contraindications that can occur with digoxin? Hypersensitivity, AV block, idiopathic hypertrophic sub, sub aortic stenosis, constricted pericarditis, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, preserved left ventricular ejection, QMI, hyperthyroidism, and hypothyroidism. None of those are good when you're taking digoxin. Okay, so now that we've gone over the disease processes, next we're going to go over the medications that can interact with digoxin. Oh, I almost forgot one of the other contraindications. We have this young lady over here. Megan, can you stand up? So today, I'm so excited. We just found out that Megan is expecting. And <laughs> she is so cute, you can't even tell how far along she is. And so, when you're taking digoxin, 
then you have to be careful when you're pregnant because it can cross over the placenta and also into breast milk. Were you planning on breastfeeding? No. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, she doesn't have to worry about that. Okay. One of the other uh, medications that you can take whenever, or that you should not take when you're taking digoxin is amiodarone. Okay. So because it increases the concentration, it results in toxicity and deplaces digoxin from protein binding site, and it may have an additive bradycardic effect, which slows down your heart rate, and the physical manifestations, nausea, anorexia, which, you know, uh, visual disturbances, slow pulse, and irregular heartbeat. Okay, um, who has our other drug? Okay, this young lady over here, and she's on <laughs> Dilexitron, which causes prolongation of the PR interval, and may result in additive effects, increased risk of brady heart, bradycardia, the kind of the same effects as the other one, and a heart block. And the physical manifestations, dizziness, lightheadedness, fainting, irregular heartbeat. Okay, some of the other, one of the other drugs that can occur or interact with digoxin, adenosine, increases the risk of ventricular fibrillation, increases the risk and severity of sinus bradycardia and heart block, and the physical manifestations, angina, severe bradycardia, severe hypertension, and asystole. And would you be surprised, shock me, shock me, licorice, hello people, do not take licorice and digoxin together because it can, cut, it can increase the risk of potassium depletion and cause lethargy, weakness, muscle cramps, constipation, and increased heart arrhythmia, and also St. John's wort, along with a high fiber meal, can lower the levels of digoxin in the system and cause decreased absorption. Okay, and that concludes our lecture for today. Thank you all for listening. Are you okay in here? I don't feel so good. Can you give me just a minute? Sure. That doesn't sound good. Are you feeling okay? I think I took too much of my digoxin. It sounds like it. I've got, I can't eat. And I've got really bad diarrhea. And my vision's kind of blurred. And green. Green? What does that mean? Let me show you. See what I mean? Everything's all green and fuzzy. You don't look so good. I don't feel so good. Hey y'all, my name is Margaret Gertrude Mayfield. You may know me from the shows The Weeks of Our Lives and Little House in the Pines. I'm here to discuss the side effects, adverse reactions, and monitoring needed for the medication digoxin. You will want to watch for fatigue, headache, weakness, blurred vision, yellow or green vision, arrhythmias, bradycardia, ECG changes, AV block, SA block, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, thrombocytopenia, and electrolyte imbalances. Phew! That's quite a list. You will want to watch very closely for the signs and symptoms of digoxin toxicity. In an adult, you will watch for abdominal pain, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, visual disturbances, bradycardia, and dysrhythmias. In kids, the first sign is usually cardiac arrhythmias. When the patient is on DIG, you will want to take their apical pulse for one full minute before each dose. If it is below 860 in an adult, 70 in a child, or 90 in an infant, do not give this medication. Contact the doctor or nurse practitioner taking care of the patient. Also, pay attention to the rate, rhythm, and quality of pulse. You will need to monitor blood pressure periodically during IV therapy. ECGs also need to be done periodically as well as six hours after each dose. Watch your IV sites for redness and infiltration. You will need to monitor inos as well as daily weight. Watch for peripheral anema and listen for rails throughout therapy. Remember, ditch can cause falls in the elderly. And now, you know.